After my first game with the Alpha Strike match play rules from Catalyst Game Labs, I invited my friend Matt over to get a second game in. This time I was more familiar with the beta rules and my camera set behaved better. Still not without issue, but at least I caught it a lot quicker when it stopped working. If you haven't seen the match play beta yet, I'll put a link to it in the video description. Matt and I decided to play a skirmish size game for this one too. I'd like to do a battle scale game at some point, but with the troubles I had on the last battle report I wanted to give the smaller size another go. That meant we each had 250 PV to work with. I brought the same ill clan era free world league list as my last game. My first mech is a Wraith TR5. It's a mobile medium with a 16 inch move and a 14 inch jump that can deal 3 damage at short and medium range. It also benefits from ENE which makes it a little less likely to disappear to a critical hit. Then I have a Hunchback C. This one is a bit slower but still decently mobile with 12 inches of movement. Where it shines though is being able to deal 6 damage at short and medium range. To make the most of that I've improved its skill to 3. My Trebuchet TBT99 matches the 12 inch movement profile of the Hunchback but has a 432 damage profile. An overheat of 1 lets it jump up to 5 damage at short or 4 at medium, and they can also make indirect fire attacks. An Aeris ERS-2N is the third 50 ton mech in my list. It is similar to the Wraith with a 14 inch jump and 3 damage at short or medium range. It is slower on the ground though with only a 10 inch move, and it can deal 1 damage at long range or with indirect fire. My last mech is a Phoenix Hawk PXH-9. It is a bit faster than the Aeris with 12 inches on the ground or 16 inches jumping. Then it has the same 3 damage at short and medium range, but no long range firepower. Because I had the available points, I also boosted the skill on this one to 3. Supporting those mechs, I have an Anto's Heavy Tank. I picked the Chemical Laser variant that can do 7 damage at short or medium range and 1 damage at long range. It is more durable than any of my mechs, but also much slower with only a 6 inch move. Its LRMs can be used to deliver 1 point of damage with an indirect fire attack too. Matt chose a Clan Invasion Era Force from the Free Rossalog Republic. His biggest mech is an 85 ton Battlemaster BLR3M. It has plenty of armor and structure, an 8 inch move, and a 441 damage profile. In the heavyweight class, he has a Thunderbolt TDR7M. Its profile looks pretty similar to the Battlemaster. Its movement is also 8 inches, and it has a 442 damage profile. Its lower tonnage does mean it loses a few points of armor and structure compared to the assault mech, though. It can also make indirect fire attacks for 1 damage. Up next in tonnage order, Matt brought a Crab CRB-20. It is a medium mech with a 10 inch move, 3 damage at short range, 2 damage at medium range, and the option to overheat for 1 extra damage. Plus it has the ENE special. Then Matt's lightest mech is a Wolfhound WF-2. It has a 12 inch move, a 331 damage profile, and the ENE special. Then Matt has two pairs of vehicles supporting his mechs. He also likes the Ontos and has a pair of the 3053 version. In Alpha Strike, the only difference between these and the chemical laser variant I took are that they cost one more PV and can do one more damage in the long range bracket. Then his other pair of vehicles are Skulker Wheeled Scout Tanks. These are Matt's fastest units with a 14 inch move, but they only do one damage at short and medium range and only have a total of three points of armor and structure. For this game we decided to use a sparse woods terrain theme. This made the battlefield a lot more open than the game I played against Jeff. We still had some woods and buildings that could give cover, but there wouldn't be nearly as many places to hide completely. Our randomly rolled deployment is lines, which means our forces will be starting within 3 inches of our home edges. Then for our objective I rolled hold the fort. For that we each needed to place two objective tokens on the board. And then starting on turn 3 we could earn victory points for controlling our own objectives by having one of our units within 6 inches and no enemy units within 12 inches. For our skirmish size game, earning 10 victory points would end the game early and otherwise will play out 6 turns. We each dropped our first objective near a woods. Then I put my second one near a building on my side, and Matt opted for a relatively open area for his second objective. Matt won initiative for the first turn, so I opened the game by sprinting my Antos towards my objective by the woods. Then Matt moves one of his Antos forward towards the building on his side of the board. I jump my Aeris to hide behind the building on my side near my second objective. Matt moves his other Antos up towards the woods on the left side of his board half. My Wraith sprints halfway across the board in order to hide behind the building in the middle of the battlefield. Matt has his Thunderbolt maneuver around the woods in the upper right corner. Then I jump my Phoenix Hawk into the woods near my Antos. Matt moves his Battlemaster straight forward. I take a look at some possible moves for my Trebuchet. But then I end up moving my Hunchback over towards my left objective. In response to that, Matt moves his crab up into the woods. Then he moves his skulker on the right up to hide behind the building. I move my trebuchet forward to where it'll just be outside medium range from Matt's battlemaster. Then Matt moves his wolfhound towards the left side of the board. 
and he shifts his second Skulker just enough so that it'll count as having moved. My only attack for the turn is my Trebuchet taking a shot at Matt's Battlemaster. Both of my attack rolls miss, though. Matt opens fire with his Thunderbolt taking a shot at my Antos, and it misses. His Battlemaster takes a long-range shot at my Hunchback, and its PPC goes wide. His Wolfhound also shoots at my Hunchback, and it misses. And then his final attack is his Antos firing LRMs at my Hunchback, and those miss too. I won initiative for turn two, so Matt has the first move. He shifts his Antos on the right forward to the corner of the building. Then I move my Antos forward into the woods where it would have some protection from the trees. And Matt does the same thing with his Antos on the left. I consider moving my Hunchback forward to contest Matt's objective on the left. Then I decide to move my Trebuchet towards the central building instead. Then Matt moves his Thunderbolt forward on the right edge of the battlefield, but he's careful to stay outside of medium range for my Antos. I move my Hunchback forward on the left side of the map, and then Matt moves his crab so that it's just inside of the woods there. I jump my Phoenix Hawk so that it can hide behind the central building. Matt moves his Wolfhound forward just outside of the woods. Then he moves his Battlemaster straight towards the central building. I jump my Aeris out to accompany the Hunchback as they push forward on the left side. Then Matt's Skulker sprints to take cover behind the central building, and his other Skulker does the same thing. And then as the final move of turn 2, I jump my Wraith over that building and behind the Battlemaster. Matt opens up the attack phase with his Crab shooting at my Hunchback, but its lasers miss. His Battlemaster fires at the Hunchback too, and it deals 1 damage. Then his Wolfhound opens fire on my Wraith, and everything it shoots misses. Then one of his Antos fires at my Antos. Despite the woods, three damage is still dealt. The Thunderbolt shoots at my Wraith, but the Nimble Mech dodges everything. Then for Matt's final attacks, his other Antos fires on my Wraith. It manages to hit for one damage. I start my attacks with my Trebuchet shooting at Matt's Wolfhound, but everything it fires misses. My Hunchback opens fire on his Battlemaster and it scores 4 points of damage. My Aeris shoots at the Battlemaster too. It only does one more point of damage. Then my Antos returns fire against Matt's Antos. I manage to do 1 damage and do a motive hit on it. Then for my final attack of the turn, my Wraith opens up on the back of the Battlemaster, and it scores 3 more damage to blow away the last of the Battlemaster's armor. Matt won initiative for turn 3, so I have the first move. I just shift my Antos to the edge of the woods. Matt has his Antos on the right, stand still. Then I have my Trebuchet fall back towards my objective on the left. Matt's Thunderbolt moves towards my objective on the right, but it isn't able to get within 12 inches of it. I have my Aeris jump along the left edge of the battlefield so that it can thread in Matt's objective on that side. In response, Matt moves his crab out of the woods in order to have the opportunity to engage the Aeris at short range and then I move my Hunchback right next to my Eris. And Matt shifts his Antos to the edge of the woods. I jump my Wraith back to my side of the central building where it's still within 12 inches of Matt's objective in the middle. Matt moves one of his Skulkers forward to contest my objective on the left. Then he moves his other one to contest my objective on the right, but he makes the wise choice not to let it end up in short range of my Antos. I jump my Phoenix Hawk to get behind the Antos on the left. Matt does a minimal move with his Battlemaster, and then to finish up movement for the turn, he moves his Wolfhound just across the pond for my Phoenix Hawk. To kick off attacks for the turn, my Trebuchet overheats and fires at the Skulker in front of it, but it misses with everything. Then my Phoenix Hawk fires at the same Skulker. It misses too. On the other side of the battlefield, my Antos fires at the Skulker near it. It deals 2 damage and slows it down with a motive hit. Then my Wraith fires at that Skulker too. It manages to do 1 damage, which is enough to take out the vehicle. My Hunchback opens fire on Matt's Crab. It hits for 5 damage, which strips away all of the Crab's armor. Then my Aeris follows up with another attack against the Crab. It does 1 damage and causes a weapon crit. Eager to get rid of the remaining Skulker, I call in a light airstrike against it. That hits for 1 damage. Then my air support follows up with Happy Strike. This one hits two to destroy the Skulker. Matt kicks off his attacks with his crab overheating to shoot at my Hunchback. 
and hits for four damage and strips away the last of the Hunchback's armor. Then his Wolfhound fires on the Hunchback too. It hits with all three damage and destroys the Hunchback. His Antos on the right side of the board fires at my Antos. It hits for four damage and causes a motive hit and a weapon hit. His Skulker fires at my Antos too, but it misses. His other Skulker fires at my Trebuchet. It hits for one damage. Then his Thunderbolt fires at my Antos. And it misses with everything. On the other side of the board, his Battlemaster fires at my Eris. And manages to land one damage. And then to finish up shooting, his Anto shoots out of the woods at my Eris. It only hits for one damage though. With the end of turn three, we started scoring. I controlled both of my objectives to earn four points, and Matt didn't control either of his. My Anto stands still as the first move of turn four. Matt's Anto's on the right does the same. Then I reposition my trebuchet so that it's on the left side of the building while guarding my objective. Matt moves his Thunderbolt forward in order to contest my objective on the right. Then I jump my Eris into the top left corner of the battlefield where it can still threaten Matt's objective on the left. In response, Matt moves his crab just to the side of the Eris. Then I have my Phoenix Hawk jump so that it's within 12 inches of both of Matt's objectives. Matt shifts his Zonto so that it's at the edge of the woods and within short range of my Phoenix Hawk. I lost the rest of the footage of this phase to a camera malfunction, but my Wraith jumped down into the woods near my Antos. Matt's Battlemaster moved up towards my Phoenix Hawk, and then his Wolfhound moved towards the left edge of the board. To start the attack phase, my Wraith shoots at Matt's Thunderbolt, but it misses with everything. Then my Antos opens fire on the Thunderbolt too. It lands with two damage. On the other side of the board, my overheated trebuchet shoots at Matt's Wolfhound, but it fails to connect. My Aerith shoots at his crab, but it misses with everything too. Then to wrap up my attacks for the turn, my Phoenix Hawk shoots at the Battlemaster. It connects for two damage and a fire control hit. For Matt's shooting, his Thunderbolt fires on my Antos. It deals one damage and inflicts another motive hit on it. His Wolfhound fires back at my trebuchet and manages to deal one damage to it. His Antos on the left unleashes on my Phoenix Hawk, but it only manages to hit for one damage. His Battlemaster attacks the Phoenix Hawk too, and it deals three damage to it. His second Antos fires on my Antos, and it hits for five damage, destroying my tank. Then Matt calls in an airstrike against my Phoenix Hawk, but the fighter misses. My Phoenix Hawk surviving prevents Matt from scoring either of his objectives and then his Thunderbolt and Wolfhound prevent me from scoring. That leaves us still at 4-0. I start turn 5 by jumping my Eris so that it's within 12 inches of both of Matt's objectives. He has his Antos on the right stand still. Then I jump my Phoenix Hawk next to the pod where it can also be within 12 inches of both objectives. Matt's Crab moves to be within short range of my Eris. I abandon my rightmost objective and jump my Wraith towards the central building where it can hide from Matt's units on the right. Matt moves his Thunderbolt forward, and has his Antos on the left standstill. I shift my trebuchet just a little bit back towards my objective to keep it safe. Then Matt moves his Wolfhound so that it's out of sight from my trebuchet but still within 12 inches of my objective. Then he finishes up movement for this turn by moving his Battlemaster so that it's still within 6 inches of his objective but also in short range to my arrows. At the start of the attack phase, my trebuchet shoots at the back of Matt's Antos. It lands 2 damage against it. My Wraith opens fire on his Wolfhound, but it misses with everything. My Phoenix Hawk shoots at his Battlemaster, but it misses too. And then to finish up my attacks, my Aerith shoots at the Battlemaster. It hits for 3 damage and a weapon critical hit. Matt starts his attacks with his Thunderbolt targeting my Aerith at long range. It misses, unsurprisingly. Then the Battlemaster targets it at short range. Despite its fire control hit, it manages to deal one damage to the Aris. Matt's Antos on the right side of the board targets my Phoenix Hawk. It hits for four damage and destroys the mech. His crab shoots at my Aris and manages to do one damage. Then his other Antos targets the Aris too. It hits for two damage and causes a movement crit. With the Aris down to just one structure left, the Wolfhound takes aim. It misses with everything though. Then Matt calls in a light air strike against the Aris. This time the fighters hit and take out the mech. Taking out both my Phoenix Hawk and Aris allowed Matt to score one of his objectives. 
That brought our score to 4-2 at the end of turn 5. To start movement for turn 6, I have my trebuchet move forward just enough to get its target movement modifier. Matt has both of his Antos stand still, and his Battlemaster move towards my Wraith. After thinking through some options, I jump my Wraith away from the center so that it has more distance between it than the Battlemaster and the Antos on the far side. Matt marches his Thunderbolt towards my Wraith, moves his Crab towards the Wraith too, and then he finishes up the turn's movement by moving his Wolfhound to a spot where it's out of sight of both of my mechs, guaranteeing that I can't score this turn. I start the attack phase with my trebuchet overheating and firing at the crab. It misses with everything. Then my wraith targets the battle master. It misses with everything too. To start off Matt's attacks, his Antos on the far side of the board shoots at the wraith. And it misses. Next his battle master fires at the wraith. It misses too. His crab overheats and shoots at the wraith, but fails to connect with anything. His thunderbolt shoots at the wraith too. And it misses. And then his second Antos targets the Wraith to make the last attacks of the game. It misses with everything too, so we dealt no damage this turn. After that uneventful round of shooting, Matt scored his objective on the right, which tied us at four victory points each. The format has a tiebreaker, which is whichever side has the most PV left on the board wins. And Matt clearly had more PV than me, so he gets the victory this game. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more from me, you can subscribe here on YouTube at scottsgameroom.com or on Patreon. I'd especially like to thank my supporters on Patreon for encouraging me to keep making these videos.